Hi everyone, this is Kevin from Edureka and welcome to this video where we explore who a business analyst is and what they do. But before we dive into the video, let's quickly take a look at the agenda. First up, we'll give you a definition of who a business analyst is and we'll break it down a little bit so you have a rough idea. Then we'll dive deep into the roles and responsibilities. We'll see what they do from A to Z using an example that will help you paint a vivid picture of who they are and what they do. After that, in the next section, we will summarize all of that and then we'll move on to talk about what are the different kind of companies that are hiring business analysts. Finally, we'll explore the salaries of business analysts and that'll be the end of the video. If you like this video, then please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Do not forget to hit that notification bell as well so you're notified every time we put out a nice video like this one. Also, we're going to leave some links down in the description below in case you're interested in becoming business analyst and you want to acquire the relevant skills. Let's get started with the video. So first up, who is a business analyst? So a business analyst is somebody who bridges the gap between internal IT team and the business using data analytics to assess processes, determine requirements and deliver data driven recommendations and finally present reports to executives and stakeholders. So let's break that down a little bit, shall we? First, a business analyst is a person who stands between the internal IT team and the client that has certain requirements. So a business analyst understands those requirements, whatever it may be, to build an app, to get an insight on what direction their business should take, whatever it may be. They understand all of the requirements for the clients and they act as a proxy for the clients and help the IT team develop the results that are going to be satisfactory for the client, that will help the client make data-driven decisions. And that is exactly what a business analyst is. So now you might ask yourself, well, that is all nice and dandy, but what do they actually do in order to accomplish that? So let's use an example of Stuart, who is a business analyst working for an application development firm. And so that's the business analyst. And let's take a look at the client. So the client in this example is Martha, who is an IT manager at a modern hospital, who is tasked with making a mobile application that allows its customers to make appointments, consult doctors, view their medical reports and receipts, and make payments for hospital bills through their online account, all without having to wait in line, which is so much of a discomfort and inconvenience for patients. So Martha thinks instead of hiring a whole team to make this application, she's just gonna approach a company that is gonna help her with this. So Martha approaches Stuart's company to see if they can help her with making the app. That's where she meets Stuart, who's been assigned to work on Martha's project from start to finish. Martha discusses the vision behind the app, and Stuart probes Martha to form a picture of what the final product should be like. He assures Martha that he will take it from here and deliver the product as per requirements, budget, and time frame. But how does he do all of that? Well, let's find out. So in this section, we will attempt to understand the roles and responsibilities of a business analyst by using the same example of Stuart and Martha. Okay, so let's get started. So first thing that Stuart has to do is to understand the vision behind the app, what Martha and the hospital are trying to achieve with this app. Here he understands properly what the motives behind making these applications are. Next, he gathers all the requirements from Martha by asking her the appropriate questions about the apps. He does this so that he can understand what the app should look like and how it should function. So he coordinates with Martha to gather all the functional requirements like features and how they function, customer data security, payment system, automatic assistant on the app, etc. And non-functional requirements like look and feel of the app. After he documents all of this, he then allots resources. So what does that mean? He assigns the various parts of the projects to respective teams, such as the development team, the user experience and user interface team, and so on, and finalizes all the tools and software they're gonna need for the project, keeping in mind the budget of the client, of course, and the time frame. So the project has been delegated to appropriate parties and they are all off to races in order to finish the project. And so his next duty is to make sure that he tracks the progress and offers recommendation. So what do I mean by that? So as the project develops, he monitors its progress to make sure that the client's needs are addressed. 
He also makes useful suggestions to improve the project and points out corrections to make if needed in order to make sure that clients' needs are met. But not only that, he also conducts meetings between Martha and the assigned teams to discuss and decide on how to rectify the issues quickly. Making an application is a complex process, so there are bound to be mistakes that are happening and issues to be cropping up. So to iron them out, he conducts meetings so everybody is on the same page. This also ensures that Martha is always in the loop and knows how the project is coming along. So let's say they have worked hard and a prototype is ready. So once it is ready, he begins user testing and after thorough testing collects their feedback. This helps with improvement, correction and finalization of the product. This also helps with deciding whether the app has met the client's expectations. It gives an idea on improvements and corrections to make, which are communicated to the development team and this cycle continues until a deliverable product is ready. So the prototype has been through a few iterations of corrections and improvement and now is finally looking ready. So now what Stuart does is he analyzes the gathered data of the app and uses data visualization tools like Tableau, Power BI to make reports that provide insight on the app's performance. These reports could be as simple as charts in a document explaining the data or could be in form of dashboard with multidimensional visual reports based on key performance indicators of the app. Or outside this example, it could be used to portray business sales figures, employee performance, and endless other possibilities. But stay with me, let's stick to this example. After analyzing the data and generating reports and putting it in a nice visual form, now Stuart can move on to the last part of the project. Finally, the project is complete. Stuart documents all pertinent information about projects such as app documentation, like how to use it, maintenance processes, and so on, along with the findings and reportings after testing. Stuart presents all of this to Martha and other stakeholders from the hospital and give them a walkthrough of the whole app and explains the reports. And so now is the product delivery time. Stuart carried out all his roles and responsibilities in Martha's project and is ready to deliver the hospital health app to her on time and in budget. Martha, her CTO, and the hospital are all happy with the app. It will help their customers and staff immensely. So let's move on to the next section where we summarize all of the roles and responsibilities of a business analyst. And so they are as follows. Business analysts act as a liaison for their clients and work with technical teams to deliver products and services that will alleviate the client's problems. It helps to think of them as people who bridge the gap between the technical IT people and the client. They understand the problem or the vision of the client, gather their requirements, and ensure they're implemented correctly. They need to know hard skills like programming, data analytics, data visualization tools, and so on and soft skills like excellent communication, multitasking, leading teams, and more as we saw in the example. Now that we have summarized all of the roles and responsibilities and now you have an understanding who they are, let's now take a look at what companies are hiring business analysts. So first of all, according to Glassdoor, there are 4,199 business analyst jobs in India currently. And in the United States, there are about 87,000 vacancies for business analysts. Well, let's now talk about who's hiring. Business analysts are required in all industries, all domains, and in all parts of the world. So let's take a look at some of the companies that are hiring business analysts right now. So Capital One, Finance, Deloitte, Finance, Zomato, Uber, Food Delivery and Transport, Tata Consultancy Services, Flipkart e-commerce, Shell, Energy and Petroleum. HP is electronics, American Express, again, finance, Accenture, IT technical services, IBM, Mindtree, Cognizant, Swiggy, you get the picture. They're diverse companies in diverse domains, and they all want business analysts. These are not the only companies that are hiring business analysts. There are over 3,500 companies at the moment on Glassdoor that are hiring business analysts. And that says something about the demand for the job. But not only that, let's take a look at the salaries next. So for the salaries, you have about seven and a half lakh rupees in India and about $75,000 in United States. 
Keep in mind that these are average base salaries. So this is not even the top level of what they can actually make. It can go almost up to 20, 30 lakhs in India and all the way up to like over 200,000 in the United States. And these are average base salaries. So they don't include stuff like incentives, bonuses, allowances, and so on. So of course, it's an attractive job. You have to be a people's person in order to understand the client. And also you need to have some technical skills so you can understand the technical guys. In other words, they need to have soft skills like communication, handling teams, and hard skills like understanding programming, data analysis, and so on. And with the end of this section, we've also come to the end of the video. And I hope this video was informational and entertaining for you. And thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, kudos to you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!